Now I would like to invite um, our professor Bren Brendan Barrett to join the team for a live talk. Why Osaka University? Why would you choose Osaka University? And then uh, we ask them to talk about their personal experiences as international faculty members, but also as former international students in Japan. So perhaps before we start, we could start from self-introductions. Um, could you all briefly introduce yourselves? Professor Brennan? Oh, thank you very much, Aryuna. Yes, my name is, uh, is Brendan Barrett. I'm a professor at the Center for Global Initiatives, and I'm currently teaching uh, three courses at the university, one on climate change, which I think is an issue everybody is concerned about, um, science communication and video documentary production. Uh, my research is in the area of uh, urban sustainability, um, climate mitigation, and also community placemaking. And I'll be talking a little bit about the, my teaching activities later on. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, For, um, Professor Clement. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Ariona. Uh, my name is Clement. I'm from Indonesia. Um, I came to Japan in 2002, so it's almost 20 years ago as a master's student. So I spent five years studying at Osaka University. Then I work as an um, assistant professor here. Um, my area of specialty is uh, structural biology and biochemistry. I left uh, the university for a couple of years to work for the company and work at the field of drug discovery. And I'm, um, as I mentioned, I'm biochemist and I'm structural biologist. So I will share with you some of the classes that, that, that I taught in, in international college. Thank you very much. Now, Dr. Ilimi. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ming Li. I'm from China. I have and I have been in Japan for 12 years. My uh, research is about the internationalization of higher education. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last but not least, Dr. Sisi Zhang. Hi, uh, I'm Sisi Zhang. I come from China too, and I am here now work, work here as an assistant professor now. But and I also graduated from uh, Osaka University, uh, school, the Graduate School of Letters, and a major in Japanese linguistics. Thank you very much. So I would like to talk first about teaching and learning at Osaka University during COVID pandemic, and perhaps Professor Brendan, you could talk about some of your experiences during this time. Thank you very much, yes. I think you all are quite used to studying online and seeing your fellow students wearing masks. And um, one of the big issues during COVID was actually the number of international students coming here um, declined significantly um, because of the, the controls that were imposed. But at the same time, as you can see from this, uh, this uh, slide, uh, unfortunately, uh, Japanese students were not able to go overseas. So what um, universities started to do, and it's the case here at the, um, sorry, the case here at the Osaka University is to introduce virtual programs. So um, we have something which is called virtual student exchange, which is quite exciting. And underneath this program, students at our partner universities and our students can participate in um, virtual online programs. And they've been very uh, successful and also very uh, exciting educational opportunities for the students. And I want to share um, one example, which is a course that I've been teaching with a, a network of universities across Asia Pacific with a, the focus is on, uh, on climate change. And um, it's really, really interesting because with this kind of virtual uh, course, it's possible to get perspectives on climate change from different countries. So for instance, one partner is from Hawaii, another is from Australia, another one is from uh, Samoa. So you start to see a real uh, diverse uh, viewpoints. And I think the students really, really enjoy um, that experience. The other example I want to share with you is the course that I'm running on, on documentary production. And so uh, during COVID, we had to take certain precautions. And as you can see here, my students uh, went out uh, into the local community and they're actually filming 
um, the story of a pet cafe. And so the students are wearing masks and also the owner of the pet cafe is also wearing a mask. But it's, it's possible, even in this very difficult condition, for the students to do activities with the local community. And I think that's one of the sort of really uh, interesting aspects of uh, education at uh, Osaka University is that we have this, these big global challenges that we're trying to address, but we're also encouraging our students to work in the community. That's very nice. And it seems like students are having some fun there. And I wonder if any student can take this kind of course. This is online course, right? Yes. Yeah, so the, the other really exciting part about this is that students from all different dif disciplines take the course. So there were language students, there were biomedical science students, uh, there were engineering students, all working together to, uh, to produce these document documentaries. That's awesome. Thank you very much. And I was wondering about on-site learning because that's our now current situation at Osaka University. So Dr. Clement, if you can share some of your insights. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mariona. So um, let, let me take you back before COVID. <laughs> so um, like all other students from all around the world, Osaka University students study in classes. They do experiments in labs. And we actually have a very high um, quality labs, high technology labs that, that use state of the art um, machines and also equipment. Um, but what I will share with you today are something a bit different that I have had the experience of uh, doing with my students um, and field study and using some external ex uh, research infrastructure, which is also very, very advanced in Japan. Now, the first one is um, a, a, a course I was responsible to teach um, at the Chemistry Biology Combined Major Program. Unfortunately, this program is not continued anymore. But this is um, a field trip uh, course that we took uh, in Wakayama. So it's about three hour drive from Osaka. And there is a marine station there that belongs to Kyoto University. So we use that um, um, uh, facility. So students stayed there for five to six days and they collected samples from uh, the, uh, the beach and uh, the surrounding sea area. And in this um, slide here, you can see the first year students. They are observing the virtualization of sea urchin. Um, we also collected samples and, and tried to identify uh, the animals, um, mostly invertebrates. Uh, so invertebrates are animals without backbones, of course. And, um, Try to understand how they live in such a, what kind of habitat they 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 they, they, they are there. Okay, so this is uh, the example of um, the visit to an external research infrastructure. So we visited. So these are these students are also first year students. We visited a supercomputer um, research facility in Kobe. So this was in 2017, and the, the place housed K supercomputer, and now it's the commission, and they have the um, Fugaku. So this is the second fastest supercomputer in the world now. Okay. This is another um, example of Spring 8. This is a synchrotron or a particle accelerator that produces extremely brilliant X-ray beams. And also students can go here to do their research if they're, of course, depending on the major and, and the research work that, that, that they're doing. Yes. Okay, Dr. Wame, I'm, I'm wondering, uh, just as you uh, introduced, so not only Graduate student, also undergraduate student, they have a lot of chance approaching research and doing research field work, right? Exactly. Um, the, I mentioned before the uh, field work that I, I, I was teaching was actually for undergraduate students. And also, if you're in the lab for, for this one, the spring eight here, you can actually go there and, and do your research. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Zhang, maybe perhaps you can now talk, talk about student life on campus. Okay. Um, along with studying and doing research on campus, you know, another very big part is eating on campus. So I would like to introduce uh, some of cafeterias here on campus. Uh, I think uh, some of them might know that traditional Japanese cuisine is called, also called washoku in Japanese, uh, which refers to, as you can see here on the picture, uh, to individual Japanese food or a set of Japanese dishes. Uh, it's very famous. Uh, washoku is very famous as they, uh, a very healthy food due to um, a low calorie, nutritious, and well-balanced diet. Osaka is called the kitchen 
of Japan. So uh, it's famous for food like takoyaki, okonomiyaki, and you can find lots of international cuisine here. Same on our campus. Uh, it's possible to have both a set of dishes or individual food, and you can also find other various food here on our campus. Let me show you uh, at Osaka University, there are more than 20 restaurants and cafes spread out over, uh, over our three campuses. And you can find everything from Japanese food to global cuisines, including halal foods. Okay, look at this yummy dishes. <laughs> this food on campus tastes delicious and the prices are reasonable compared to eating off campus. Um, wondering uh, Professor Brandon, uh, Dr. Clement and, uh, and Dr. Lee, what's your favorite dishes on campus? Wow, well, I'm not sure if the students could see it because the picture went by really quickly, but there was a curry rice there. And I have to say that I'm a really big fan of um, Japanese curry. I like it too. Um, my favorite food is um, uh, katsudon at the cafeteria of the School of Engineering. Yeah, that's used to study. for sure, right? Oh, yes. So, so, so big, big portion. What about yeah, I like our university's famous food, Tenshi Mapodong. I think it's in the picture. The, the yeah, in middle, the middle. Yeah, right? that's Tenshi Mapodong. With tofu and eggs. Yeah, like it is a very big rice bowl, right? It's <laughs> yeah. a very big rice bowl. So for students, it's very reasonable and a very delicious food. And here you can see uh, our campus characters are very easy to use, even for non-Japanese speakers. Um, we have main dishes uh, and side dishes. The pictures of the items are displayed uh, on the menu board. You can tell the staff what you like, or just point to the picture. And for the side dishes, dishes you can choose from salad, tof, tofu, eggs, natto, or anything you, can, uh, you think it goes well with your main, main dish. We also have free beverages. Okay, we also have a campus support center nearby cafeterias on each campus. Uh, you can buy books, stationery, stationery, snacks, and even make travel reservations or get support to find an apartment. It's like a one stop for all you need. And we also have other services uh, like health center. Let me invite Dr. Lee to uh, introduce our health centers and other services. Thank you. Uh, I think during this time under pandemic, students are very concerned about the uh, uh, health care. As some of you already know, Japan is a global uh, leader in medical care and the insurance system with high coverage uh, and the safety net that support all the members of the society, in, of course, including uh, international students. So the medical care system uh, makes it very convenient to receive high quality care and service for cheaper price. Uh, this is because Japan has a national health insurance and the insurance, 70% uh, of the total uh, medical cost is covered by NHI. And it also will cover the intensive treatment. NHI is required for all residents of Japan and internet student can roll for a relative lower amount. Also, I should uh, me also mention that if international students are coming here with children, uh, their medical expense are almost 100% uh, covered by the insurance as well. Another point I want to uh, mention is about Osaka University has a health center and usually our service are free. And health center uh, conduct annual uh, checkups for all members of the university. Also, students can receive consulting support when students feel distressed or homesick. Uh, so, Dr. John, have you ever been to our university's health center? Yeah, I've been there for several times. And just imagine that like, when you get really sick, like when you're in library, and you can go to uh, health centers nearby and get free pills. I think that is very convenient, helpful. Yeah, yeah, it's very convenient. Uh, so uh, you may be wondering about current health uh, measures in Japan during the pandemic. So where the uh, vaccines are full covered, uh, by the state, PCR uh, tests are covered by the insurance, 
and the inpatient treatment also free of charge. The Japanese government has uh, prepared enough bed and medical staff to respond to patients, which were made international students feel at ease. So far, we don't feel any difficulty and everything is still in order. So it's all about our free talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hope you, enjoy, you will come to Osaka University and try some of the dishes and take some of the courses.